talking about this idea of run. It's a new series we're starting today. And I know that's crazy. Like, you know the way I think about running. I hate it. I think it's dumb. Like, I don't do it. And so for me to do this is literally going against myself, but here's the thing, it's spiritually speaking only, so I'm not promoting promoting running. I don't understand it. Like, runners are just like CrossFitters. Like, everybody knows that's what you do. Like, you don't let everybody not know. Like, it's all out there. And and runners are like kind of those that are training for a race or or a marathon. They let everybody know, training for my marathon, training for my marathon, getting ready to run on my marathon. I'm so excited, I'm training for my marathon. And I want to go, do you even know what a marathon is? Like, do you know where that came from? Because if you don't, I'm about to educate you. Back in the Greek days, there was a battle in a city called Marathon. And literally, they were battling the Persian army. Well, when they started to win, a dude, a Greek soldier, ran from Marathon to Athens, which was 26 miles exactly. When he gets there, he busts through the doors of the hall and he screams, we have won. And as soon as he's done screaming it, the story goes, he literally died. Like killed over and died. And so we being the geniuses that humanity is, it goes, hey, I got an idea. Let's create a race and call it Marathon. But hey, we're not going to run 26 miles. We're going to run 26.2 miles. So we're going to run 0.2 more miles than the dude that died. And not only that, we're going to pay money to run this race. The future ain't bright. The future is not bright. I don't run. You will never catch me running. If you see me running, you better run. Because there's only two reasons I'm running. Somebody chasing me with a knife or a ferocious animal's chasing me. That's it. Like, if my kid's drowning, I ain't even running. I'm just going to walk real fast. That's it. Do not judge. You know the rules. You're not supposed to run around a swimming pool. You could trip. Come on. How can I save my kid if I bust my head? I'm smarter than you. Just don't even hold it. Don't run. Come on. But all jokes aside, I actually do respect people that have the discipline to do those kind of things. I respect athletes. I respect people that actually have the discipline to run. I respect people that are willing to rise above the conditions to be what they know and said in their heart they could be. And the reality is, is most people don't. Most people don't settle. Most people live, most people quit, and they live a life of failure. And they don't call it failure, They call it, that's just the cards that life dealt me. They don't call it that it's failure. They just tell themselves, I can't be anything more. But the reality is, is you are created for more. It's just you haven't built the discipline to get there. And that's the reality of anything, spiritual and physical. And if we don't get to that place in our spirits where we understand we're running a race, but we have to run it to win, we're never going to run the race set before us and run it right. And so today I want to talk to you about running that race, but running it to win. And I'm going to give you three things that you have to do, you have to understand to get to this place. Because I believe it's going to be powerful. And this is going to be kind of a, one of those, those kind of like, I'm going to lay it out there kind of messages. So I hope you take notes, but I hope you also understand. I'm here to champion you. And that's what I believe. But the first thing you've got to understand, write this in your notes, is if you keep looking backwards, you'll never move forward. If you keep looking backwards, you'll never move forward. I don't know if you've ever watched a movie where somebody's being chased, Right? But the person that runs like this always gets caught, never fails. They always get caught. It's the dude that goes like this and never looks back. He's the one that gets away, right? But that's the same thing in your life. If you're running this race of life and you're always looking back, you're going to get caught. Your past will catch back up with you. It's only when you run a race moving forward that you rise above it. This week I was uh, was writing my message on Wednesday and I got the email for all the connection cards. Uh, I get that every week around Wednesday. And I like to stop in the middle of that because I like to read what everybody's asking for prayer and what they're talking about because it helps me write a message that actually pertains to you. And literally, as I was reading it, literally somebody wrote in the connection card exactly what I'm speaking about today. So I actually asked them, I said, can I share a portion of your connection card? So I got their permission, don't worry. Uh, I'm not outing them. But they actually wrote, and it was written by a person named Danielle Demon. She's actually a phenomenal member of our church, but a phenomenal athlete. She competes in 
triathlons, duathlons all over the world, national competitions. And she wrote in her connection card something so profound and so powerful. She said it like this. Last year, 2016 was marked by a great depression. It stole my joy, passions, and separated me from friends and family and caused me to give up on my dreams. Fear told me there is no point. You are not worth it. You and your dreams are a waste of time. See, what most people don't know is Danielle in college was a world-class athlete. She actually competed for Baylor University, was one of the top athletes for the track and field, and was a world-class cyclist. But in the midst of all her competitions, actually had a back injury that was so severe that completely wiped her out of competitions. Actually put her in the hospital for a period of time. And through that injury, she thought that was the end of her dreams. Fear told her that she would never be able to recover. Fear told her she could never train like she used to. Fear told her, do you wanna feel what that injury felt like again? And so she started living life settling. She started living life thinking maybe she wasn't called to those dreams or maybe those passions, those hungers that she feels in her spirit are something she should ignore. And in that, depression started screaming. Because here's what you've gotta understand. When you settle for a life you are not intended to live, you're settling for the voice of depression in your heart and mind because it will echo and it will echo louder because you are created for a purpose. But she had a choice last year. In the midst of her depression, in the midst of her struggle, in the midst of it all, knowing the passion was still calling, what would she do? And then she rose above it. She continues to write this. Little did fear know that these lies would become legs on a raging fire that has motivated me to claim back what has been given to me and to relentlessly go after my dreams of becoming a professional athlete. Using that platform to motivate, inspire, and empower others, within six months of picking up my training back up, I have won three national titles in duathlon. This represents overcoming the pain of last year and reviving the dreams that God has given me. And actually yesterday, she finished third place in the U.S. National Triathlon Competition in Omaha and actually received her professional racing license yesterday. You should get excited about that. Come on. Come on. The reality is that can be us either story. The reality is, is we can overcome the things of our past and be everything we were created to be, or we can let the fear of our past always haunt us and keep us from being who we were created to be. And we've got to understand that. Jesus' very word says that anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Anyone who's trying to move forward in the things that God has for them, but continues to look back, continues to look back to their past mistakes, their their past tragedies, their past heartbreaks, their past failures will never move forward. They will stay in those moments of failure instead of capturing the new moments that God has for them. But those that are willing to look forward and move beyond their past and realize the old is gone and the new is here is those that walk into a design that God has for them. And we've got to understand you can't move forward if you keep looking back. There's a story that has always been very profoundly meaningful to me. And it's actually a story of of a moral issue that I don't really agree with, but a resolve issue that I understand if used in the things of God can be transformative in your life. And it's a story of the 1500s, a Spanish explorer named Cortez. And he was actually traveling to Mexico to colonize it for Spain, literally colonizing an existing people group. I don't agree with that, but in those days it was very common. But there was something he did that was literally mind-blowing. See, it says that he sailed there with 11 ships, 13 horses, 110 sailors, and 553 soldiers. But what he was sailing into was a country that had 5 million people already living there. Literally 5 million people. The odds was 7,500 native people to every one person of Cortez's men. And he was called, ordained by the country, to actually colonize that for Spain and take it over. And what he does is something so profound that is literally unheard of. He actually, in the midst of all of this, orders that all 11 ships be burned to the ground. See, Cortez understood something, that if they were going to achieve the impossible, they had to take retreat off the table. 
That if his men were going to do the impossible, they had to understand they could not run back to where they came from. And the reality is spiritually that is exactly what God has spoken into our hearts and through the word of God. That if you're going to do the impossible that God has created you to do, then you've got to burn the ships of your past so that you can walk forward into the future that is laid out through the grace of Jesus Christ. Some of you got to get it in your spirit that you may have to burn the ships of your past failures. Or maybe you need to burn the ships of your past success because you keep living in the good old days. Some of you need to burn the ships of your bad lifestyle choices. Some of you need to burn the ships of the tragedy that continues to haunt you and you won't let it go. Some of you need to burn the ships of your compromises so that you can move forward in what God has for you because it's only in that place where you capture the dreams of God. And I love what it says here. Paul says it like this. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection which Christ Jesus first possessed for me. Paul says, I'm not there yet. I'm not perfect, I'm not complete, but I've made a choice that I'm pressing on, I'm keeping going, I'm moving forward, I'm not looking back, I'm gonna be who God has created me to be. He goes on to say, dear brothers and sisters, no, I have not achieved it, but I focus this one thing, this is so important, Forgetting the past. Because one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Paul says, if you're going to run this race, you got to do one thing. If you're going to run to win, if you're going to obtain what you were called to obtain and be who you're called to be, you got to do one thing. you got to forget the past. you got to forget the past. And you may say, Pastor Mike, how do you forget the past? How do you fe- forget what that heartache feels like? How do you forget what that betrayal feels like? How do you forget what that disgusting sin that you did, that you committed? How do you forget that? How do you forget those circumstances? And he says one thing, you forget it by looking afford, looking ahead of the heavenly prize that God has for you, that this world is not your finish line, but the arms of your God in heaven is the finish line that you run into and he grabs you and he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. I'm not running an earthly race. I'm running to something more. And this is what you got to get deep in your spirit because this is where it keeps most people chained. Freedom is only found when we hunger more for the eternal than the temporary. Freedom is only found when you hunger more for the eternal than the temporary. If you keep gripping onto the things of this world, if you keep gripping onto your past, if you keep gripping on to your compromises, they will become life-taking from you. They will drain you. But it is only when you understand what Paul says, I am not a resident of this world, but my home is in heaven. I am an alien on this world, an ambassador from a nation of heaven, and I am going home. My body groans for where I'm supposed to be. My body longs for it, and I live this earth in this world, not holding on to the things that fade away and fleeting, but holding on to things that last and count forever. And unless you get that shift in your heart and mind, you'll always look backwards and wonder why you're getting nowhere. Number two, you gotta get this in your spirit. Craftsmanship is not created with shortcuts. Craftsmanship is not created with shortcuts. Overnight success is a fantasy. It doesn't exist. Everyone that is successful overnight has 10 years of working hard. It doesn't exist. Yet we live in an instant world where we have Instagram highlights and Facebook highlights and we think everything happens instantly. It doesn't. And if you shortcut the process, you're shortcutting your results. And too many of us want a shortcut. We want the microwave solution when we are meant to live a gourmet life. And we shortcut it. And actually, scientifically, studies shows this. Listen, they did a study of West Point, Univers- or West Point College, West Point University, and they found that talent is actually not the number one indicator of success. Actually, it is actually a detractor of success because people that are naturally talented think things come easy. Actually, the number one indicator of success is actually people that have resolve or resilience and put in effort. 
those that don't shortcut the process and never give up. And Paul says it like this. Don't you know that runners in a stadium all race, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way to win the prize. How many people are running to survive or running to win? The majority run to survive. But he goes on to say, now everyone who competes exercises self-control in everything, everything. They do it to receive a perishable crown, but we an imperishable crown. Do you see the mindset of Paul? Heaven is my home. This world is not my home. Heaven's riches are the riches I long for. He goes on to say, so I do not run like one who runs aimlessly or box like one beating the air. Instead, I discipline my body and bring it under strict control so that after preaching to others, I myself may not be disqualified. There is no shortcuts for greatness and you need to understand this do not mistake this you are created for greatness yes you are created for greatness no one is an accident no one is a mistake no one is an afterthought you are created for greatness and the very words in Ephesians says it like this for we are God's masterpiece I don't know about you but a masterpiece is well thought out it's well believed it's well planned not only that but he goes on to say he has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we could do the good things he planned for us long ago accidents aren't planned for but if you think you're an accident you are sadly mistaken you are a masterpiece look at your neighbor and say I am a masterpiece come on husbands look at your wife and say I told you masterpiece come on they don't understand why you always flex in the mirror because you are appreciating God's creation. Masterpiece. We are God's masterpiece. And if you don't understand that, you'll take shortcuts in life. You won't put in the work that it takes to be what you are called to be. And here's the reality. Watch what Paul, I'm gonna go back to what Paul said. He says, so don't run like one who runs aimlessly or box like one beating the air. He says, I'm not gonna let my emotions dictate me, my flesh dictate me. I'm not gonna just go at life with a whim. I'm gonna have a plan and I'm gonna have a plan that aligns with the nature and the design of God. But watch this, I discipline my body and bring it under strict control. And so that after preaching to others, I myself might not be disqualified. Do you see the level of responsibility Paul takes for himself? Paul says, I'm going to identify the things that are robbing me. I'm going to bring my body under strict control. I'm not going to put my places, myself in places of compromise. I'm not going to run to my negative mindset. I'm not going to let the cloud of negativity follow me. Why? Because I hate sin. I despise sin because sin destroys me. And I want to walk in a life-giving life that God has created me to be. And I understand that hatred and negativity and lust and anger and jealousy and ego is a part from the nature and the fruit of God and I don't know about you but I want to walk where love and joy and peace and patience walks and crawls in my heart and my mind and I'm going to forsake the past and walk towards what God has for me in my life and you're going to find this watch this what you do the life you live when no one else is watching determines your values and your priorities the life you live when you think you can get away with it and nobody else sees determines the heartbeat of your priorities and your discipline. Joe Frazier said it like this, you can map out a fight plan or a life plan, but when action starts, it may not go the way you plan. You know what? Sometimes when you put on that fake smile and shut the door of those skeletons in your closet, sometimes that door comes open and you didn't plan for it. And you're down to your reflexes. That means your preparation that's where your road work shows. If you cheated on that in the dark of the morning, well, you're gonna get found out now under the bright lights. The life you live privately will become the life you experience publicly. And you've gotta get that in your spirit. And you've gotta get it in your spirit. You're gonna identify the things that are trying to rob you of what God has for you. Unfortunately, here's the problem most of us face. Write this in your notes. We want God to change our circumstances without having to change ourselves at all. We want God to change our situation, just leave us alone. We want God to give us our dreams, just don't touch me. You don't get it that way. 
You can't experience the promise if you reject the process. You can't experience the miracle if you don't want the mandate. You can't reap if you don't sow. It don't happen any other way. And you've got to get this resolve in your heart and mind. Jesus said it like this. No one puts new wine into old wineskins. For the wine would burst with the wineskins and the wine and the skins would both be lost. No new wine calls for new wineskins. New anointing calls for a new life. And the old is gone and the new is here. New anointing calls for a new lifestyle that is only found in the righteousness that is found through Jesus. New anointing calls for new decisions in your life. You gotta expect that. And here's what you need to understand. Write this in your notes. You cannot expect to get new results with your same old mentality. That's called insanity. Yet too many of us think that if we can just continue to do what we've always done, we're gonna somehow get something differently happening in our life. There has to be a shift. Romans 12 is probably my favorite verses on growth in your life. And Paul says it like this. Dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you He says, I beg of you. He's begging you because he understands if you don't do this, you're robbing yourself of your future. Give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. Give your life to God. Give him every ounce of who you are. But you gotta do that. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he finds accessible. This is the only way to worship him. But watch this. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then, only then, will you learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. I don't know about you, but I want to live a life that's good. I want to live a life that is pleasing and fulfilling. I want to live a life that is perfect and it is not perfect unless God is in charge because his design is the only design. And if you don't have a burn the ship moment in your life and you don't make up your mind that you're not going back to your old lifestyles and your old habits and your old mentalities, if you don't build that resolve in your mind, you will retreat to the things that rob you. If Cortez just gave a a very emotional driven speech and and rallied his men and they would have been rallied up to conquer Mexico. But the moment the impossibles would happen and the challenge would rise, if he did not burn the ships, they would have ran back to those ships. Spiritually, we do the same thing. Spiritually, we accept Jesus in our heart and life. Spiritually, we get these goosebump moments. The worship is great. I may say something that means something to you. All of a sudden, the the hair rises on your hand and the back of your neck, you're like, yeah. But yet we never burn the ships of our past. We keep our compromises in our life at arm's distance. And when the going gets tough, and it will get tough, And when God is trying to burn away the things that are trying to keep you from who you're called to be, and he's trying to get rid of the muck that is covering your identity, you have a choice. If those ships are still standing, you'll keep running back to them instead of running to the arms of your Jesus. And you need to understand something. Write this in your notes. Great growth comes on the heels of great pain. Everything that grows must be stretched and broken down. Everything that grows first dies. And God is trying to kill away the things that are polluting you so that he can expose your original intent. And you need to understand this. God cares more about your character than your comfort. And he cares more about your heart than your circumstances. Because God doesn't want you just to experience your dreams. He wants you to have the character to keep your dreams. And he doesn't want you just to experience miracles. He wants you to have the heart that every single day you can live those miracles. And it is through that love that he does not want you settling for 50% of your potential, but living 100% of your design. He's going to try to get those things to burn away. And it's going to lead you to this last thing. And this is what you got to get in your spirit. Write this in your notes. The choice is yours alone. It's yours alone. No one forces a runner to train. No one forces a runner to race the marathon. No one forces the runner to run. They run based on their choice. And God will never force you to serve him. He's not going to force you to give him your life. 
The choice is yours. You can run so desperately after Jesus and give him every ounce of your life. You can put on the fake smile, uh, the designer shoes, and, and run with the secrets in your life and hope that no one notices. Or you may completely run from God and run a completely different direction. That choice is 100% yours. But if you run towards God, I promise you he's gonna do things in your life you can never fathom. And this is what you've gotta understand. Write this in your notes. You've gotta get to this place. You gotta get to the place where the pain of staying the same has to be greater than the pain of change. You've gotta get to this place where the pain of staying the same, the pain of settling is greater than the pain of changing your life. Because the reality is it is hard to get rid of old lifestyles and old mentalities. And it is hard to change things in your life. But it's pr I pray that that pain of changing is nothing compared to understanding the pain of what your life will look like at the end of your life if you settled for a life you were never intended to live. Don't rob yourself of your design. And I love this story that Jesus has with this gentleman about giving your life to him. In Mark, he says it like this, teacher, the man replied, I obeyed all the commandments since I was young. Looking at that man, underline this, Jesus felt genuine love for him. Jesus looked at this man and says, I'm about to give him some hard doses of reality, but it's because I love him. Do you know when God's correcting you or, or, or bringing things out of your life, it's because he genuinely loves you? And it goes on to say, there is still one thing you haven't done, he told him. Go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you'll have treasures in heaven. Then come follow me. At this, the man's face fell and he went away sad for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to the disciples, how hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? This has amazed them. But Jesus said again, dear children, it is very hard to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were astounded. Then who in the world can be saved? Who? And Jesus looked at him and said, humanly speaking, it is impossible. But not with God. Everything is possible with God. Now this isn't about money. This isn't about living a life of poverty. This is about living a life of a surrender and abandonment. And he's asking this man, don't grip onto the temporary. You gotta grip onto the eternal. And many theologians believe that the eye of the needle is actually a small gate next to the main gate in, in Israel. A lot of that was a custom. And when the main gates would close and they refused to open them, then they would open this very small gate for people to enter to and throw. But the only way that a camel could get through that gate is if it literally took everything off of it, all the baggage, the luggage, all the possessions it was carrying, and it would stoop low, and it would just go through by itself. And what God is saying is, you can hold on to the things of this world. You can hold on. You can grip onto the things of the world, but you won't be able to fit through the gates that I have for you. But if you give me your life, I will open doors you can never open by yourself. And I will take you places you can never go on your own. But you got to be willing to say, God, I want you and you alone. You get every ounce of me. And it's in those places doors open you could not fathom to be open. Very quickly, let me give you the take home and I'm going to be done today. Because I want to give you some practical things that you can start doing to start allowing this to happen in your life. And I'm going to read out of Hebrews chapter 12 because I want you to see this, this, this idea that, that the writer of Hebrews lays down. He says, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. And here's what you got to understand first. Write this in your notes. You got to surround yourself with positive influences. You don't run this race by yourself. And if you do, you're not going to get to the places you were called to go. A very African proverb says it like this. If you run 
fast, run alone. If you want to run far, run with others. We need people on the sideline championing us on. We need people in our corner. That's why I harp about life groups. It's not because I want to fill your schedule. It's because I want your heart to be filled with change. And I know your heart cannot be changed if you don't have people in your corner believing with you and fighting for you and seeing you become who you're called to be. Every life change begins with other people arm in arm with you, getting your back when the attacks come in life. If you're trying to run this race alone, you're going to mess up. Get signed up life group. Every single one of you should be in a life group. No if, ands, or buts. Get in a life group. And I'm excited. Next week, we got Life Group Sunday. There are going to be tents everywhere. But every single one of you can get signed up today in a life group. Number two, run from compromises. Run from compromises. He says to get rid of the sin or, or the things that are tripping you up and weighing you down. Here's the reality. We don't run from compromises. Here's the reality is we like to get as close to that compromise as humanly possible without crossing the line. We want to get as snug to the things of this world as humanly possible. But listen to what Paul says in Timothy. He says, run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous things, faithfulness, love, peace, and enjoy, watch this life groups, companionship of those who call on the Lord with your hearts. Why is he telling you to run from it? Because the reality is no one's perfect and we will all stumble at times. And if you get as close to the edge as possible, when you stumble and you will stumble, you will fall off the cliff. You need to be as far away from compromise as possible so when you stumble, you're in the safe zone of God's arms and you're not falling off the cliff. Run from it. Don't go into the environment you shouldn't be in. Don't watch the things you shouldn't be. Don't consume the things that are not healthy. Run from it. Number three, each day, Honor God with your life. Each day. So many times we look at our lives and we go, I can't get to where this person is. That person is, or this addiction or this struggle is too much for me. Psychologists have done studies on runners and, and world-class runners, and they found one thing. They said there's a trick that runners do when they're finding themselves at exhaustion point, hitting the wall. When they have no more energy in their legs, it feels like cement blocks on both legs. What they do is they try to trick their psyche. And what they do is they find an object, a tree, a pole, or something, and they tell themselves, that's the finish line. I just have to get there. And they said, if I can just get there, I win. And they run with everything they have, and they get to that point. And then they find another point, and another point. And it says it actually physically produces endurance it actually boosts their endurance and their abilities. That's the reality with us spiritually. You're not called to change the, your entire decade. You're called to let God change your day. Wake up every single day and say, God, I give you this day. I'm gonna honor you with this day. The very Lord's prayer says, give us today our daily bread. Give me enough just to get through this day. Later on, Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow's got enough worries of its own or today's got enough worries on its own. Just fixate on today. Wake up every single day and say, God, I give you this day. Today, I'm going to honor you. We're going to worry about tomorrow. I'll tackle tomorrow, tomorrow. But today, I want to live a life that pleases you. Take it one day at a time. And lastly, and this is really important, make a list of who and what truly matters in your life. Physically write this down. What matters? Your marriage? Your children, your friends, your career, your community. Because those are the things that sin will try to destroy in your life. Those are the things that sin's going to try to rob. The Bible says that sin leads to death, physically and spiritually. It's going to try to destroy your marriage. It's going to try to destroy your relationship with your children. It's going to try to corrupt your motives at work. It's going to try to hinder your relationships with other people. Sin isolates. Sin destroys. The Bible says in Proverbs that God sees every one of our actions. He says every one of our sins. But he's not looking at you with anger. He's looking at you with a broken heart. Because he realizes 
When we sin, we're settling for a life we were never intended to live. And he desperately wants you to call and allow him his grace and forgiveness to flood in your heart and mind. Enough settling. It's time to run that race and run it home. And the reality is, is there's people in this room that have been settling for too long. They're running with failure in mind. They don't call it that, but they're living that. And there's people in this room that have no connection with their God. Maybe you've never prayed to Jesus. Maybe you've never asked him to be a part of your life. Maybe you've hardly ever been to church, but you feel the stirring in your spirit that you're called for more and enough with the ships of the past. It's time for them to be burned. Or maybe you have in the past, but you've walked away. You've turned your back on God and and you started running away from him instead of to him. And you're living a life you know is not pleasing to God. The Bible says very clearly that if you get to this place where you're ready to choose, and that's all you have to do is choose, that if you confess with your mouth that you need him, you confess with your mouth you need his forgiveness and you believe in your heart that he did raise from the grave and he does forgive you of all your sins instantly you're saved instantly you're redeemed and that might sound easy but listen to me very clearly grace was never meant to be hard it was just meant to be chosen and your God's ready for you to choose him today and so I want everybody in this room right now to bow your heads I want nobody looking around And we're all gonna repeat this prayer together because I want people to choose their God today. Enough settling. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose from the grave. And I believe your blood washes away all sins. I have many sins in my life and you forgive them all. Come be a part of my life. And today, I'm committing my life to you. No more looking behind. God, I am chosen. I am forgiven. I do matter. Hi, family. We hope you enjoyed this week's message, and we pray that it spoke to your heart. If you made a decision today to follow Christ, or maybe you recommitted your life to Christ, we want to hear from you. Send us an email at connect at bloomhere.org so that we can send you the next steps in seeing you bloom into who you were created to be. You can also connect with us on our website, bloomhere.org, or visit our Facebook page, Bloom Church, or Twitter and Instagram, at Church Bloom. We look forward to hearing from you. We love you, and we'll see you next week.